I hope the van doesn't catch on fire. So cabling 101, the number one thing you wanna do is try and hide these. The place that we're putting our electrical is actually right here. So we wanna find all the sneaky ways that we can go ahead and hide these cables. So we're not just gonna only be doing this for the AC unit, we're gonna do this for all the cables. So we have our vent fan up there, water pump over here, oven over here. Great. The number one thing we wanna do is try and use the space that's already inside of the van to the best advantage. And for the Ram Pro Masters, if you look, Right up here, you have these channels where there's already some wiring harnesses for like brake lights, lights that are already hung up in here. So we're gonna utilize this space for these cables. So the number one thing that you wanna do is just take the cables that you have and start funneling them. We're gonna take these cables and then just start maneuvering them all the way down. I wanna try and keep these cables tied together so that I know that this is for the AC unit itself. So I'm gonna use this hole specifically and go all the way through and you can kind of see how I'm routing this through the channel now. It might be a little difficult to see some of this, but by the end of it, this cable will be all the way down there. Ta -da. Thing that is important is to always know what cable is what. So I'm gonna label these now. Excel spreadsheet and just put in. You just literally wrap it Oop. ac plus ac minus and now these will sit because our whole electrical system is going to go right here now you may be saying to yourself peter that's a lot of cable what am i supposed to do with it well you bundle it up and you hide it back there pretty straightforward i don't know why you're asking me and right now raisins over there doing a little bit more extra research making sure that we uh, capture everything that we're going to put in the van so she's looking up all the appliances and stuff that we need to use for dc ac you know, obviously we'll have solar panels going in up here. We'll have to drill a hole, probably take out this uh, insulation that we've already put in, run the cable out down through there again. The only thing that's going to be a little bit of an issue potentially is the amount of cables that run through here. We're going to try and minimize that. Uh, the rest of the stuff will be contained right down here, and the rest of that will be shown later on. But for the rest of the wiring, we need to know all of our DC stuff. So that'd be our lights, our air conditioning unit, our vent fan, our oven stove range, our water pump. So we need to know all that stuff. So we need to know all of our DC stuff so we can run it to our fuse panel, which will be over here. And then we get to our AC stuff, which number one most important thing is- Espresso. The fridge, okay. Then it's the espresso machine. <laughs> so we'll have um, an AC breaker system here with a couple of outlets as well that run through. We'll have outlets, probably one or two on this side probably one or pro definitely two over here because this is where the kitchen's going to be so we'll have those and then we'll have uh, a specific outlet for the fridge itself as well because we're thinking it'll probably go right about there that will be it and the rest of this cabling will be done in a montage cue the montage something that's important when you're wiring is this it's a plastic corrugation tubing you essentially just throw all of your wiring into it and protects it so I'm going to run a bunch of length of this and then uh, cut it and then we run our wire first. That's very important. Run your wire first through this before you run it through. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the butt to first run this and then run the wire again. And the length of this, again, is what you want to start coming out of these, these pocket holes here. So I'm just kind of estimating, giving a little bit extra slack. So I'm actually going to pull it down just a little bit more, make sure that there's enough of this. So I'll break this, um, and then we will use this as our point here. This is for the vent fan specifically. Other different appliances will have different gauges of wire. Uh, for the vent fan, we're actually going to be doing 18 gauge. Uh, again, the... Probably could go a little bit up. I think this is going to be perfect for the vent fan. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this up, run it through the corrugated tubing that we just did, and run this tubing with the wire in it instead of running them both separately. That way it's just easier, it's quicker, it's faster, it's more efficient. So I started running this cable. There's little channels that run, and it goes conveniently right near our fan where our cables are. And you can see that the corrugated plastic just come in here. So I'm gonna try and figure out if I can get a way to get my power cables through this little slip here and wire it up. And that way less space is taken up, which would be really nice. Also, I now see I probably should start here. We just made a little planning error. When we did the insulation first, it just took up all the channels that we can run our electrical. So we're gonna take all that out first, 
least in those kind of pockets up there and then go from there. All right, and just like that, the vent cable's pulled. All right, so for wiring, what you used to do is you'd have to take these little strands at the end of each wire, kind of twist them together and use a twist tie and electrical tape to make sure that the connections stay together. But these are one of the inventions where you're like, oh man, why didn't I think of that? You instead now have these things, which are heat shrink wrap with solder. So you literally put each end of the wire that you'll be connecting to and you just use your own standard little heat gun. It's like $18 for this and like $10 for this huge pack for a ton of different gauges. And it literally solders the wires together and heat shrink wraps it for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. So to connect these wires, I'll take my red and white, which the company graciously already labeled positive and negative. And then you do red and black. So red, red, black to white, um, black's gonna be our negative. So this is a lot of wire for me, but I'm okay with that for right now. I'm gonna probably feed this back through a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna keep it the same length. Also, it's just good instruction purposes. If I decide to, I can always come back and clip it later. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find your, your wire here that needs to be clipped. Since this is already clipped, I'm not gonna do that one. But you'll find your wire that needs to be clipped. I'm gonna separate these a little bit here. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna take my wire stripper. I'm gonna go to my 18 gauge, which is down here. I'm just gonna strip off quite a bit of this and just yank. You can see I've exposed some of my wire there. Do the same thing over here. So I now have my exposed <clears throat> wire for my battery connections here. And then all it takes is literally slipping it on one end. So I slip it all the way on like that. I'll take my positive and I will try and like blend these together almost. So once they're kind of connected together, what I'll do is I'll thread back over this little solder piece, obviously with the solder in the middle here. So now what we'll do is we'll just get our heat gun going and then uh, solder that in. So let me get this all out. Plug in your heat gun and solder melts about 300 or so. Uh, so I'm just gonna get it up to that. Hey, put your hands up. Actually, I'm not gonna point this at you. It's like 300 degrees. So now you can see these connections are kind of heat shrunk wrapped on. It's tough to see, but the solder has melted together. So these connections should be good and there's only one way to test it. And so when I do these, it should just turn on. I see lights. It turned on. So we know those connections are good. So now as we build everything out from the stove or the water pumps or any of the lights or anything like that, these solder connections are what we're going to use. They are proven to have a good connection in there. Just a quick little plan here. So this is what we're going to be mounting all of our electronics on. It's going to give it a nice little white spray paint. That way it looks good in there. All right. So this is the DC fuse panel. You can see that has these little screws here. And uh, I want my wires to go in there, but the easier way to do that is to have these little kind of ring crimps on here. So I'm gonna use the heat gun shrink wrap these and they'll all be ready to go and get mounted on the DC fuse panel. Once those are all cooled, it'll be easier to get them all set up. We'll be able to label our DC fuses and everything. Um, this is pretty good progress today. I also didn't show it yet, but I'll get a little bit more into the AC wiring, but that's our first, oh, that's our first wired outlet. I hope the van doesn't catch on fire. Here's a cool little trick as well uh, to make sure that your connections are all good after you kind of crimp them on and everything. Uh, use your voltmeter and there's this little thing that looks like it's screaming at you right here. You can see that the orange arrow is pointing to it. Uh, that's the check continuity. It means that you have point to point contacts. I'll show you guys quick what that sounds like. Here's the stove connection that gets actually attached to the stove. What we want to see is that this red wire here that has the new crimp on it makes a sound when I touch this red wire. And you'll get, you're gonna use your two points on your voltmeter here. I'll just put my red one here. You can see that's making contact with the red. And then what I wanna hear is a beep. That means they're connected there. Same thing over here. Good. 
connections work. These are working. I'm just gonna check the rest of them now. All right, that's done and they all have continuity. So DC wiring to get set up onto the DC fuse panel is done for now. We still have to, you know, tie them in, label them, and then uh, wire up all the electronics to it at the end anyway. But that part's done. I'm gonna move on to the AC stuff now. Which I'm a little more nervous about. All right, so I'm at a pretty decent stopping point right now. You can see I have all three of my circuits going in. So this is my uh, shore power. So my inverter's coming in here. I uh, still don't have that untied up, but this is going to be my driver side circuit. So these two outlets, you see the one there and the one there. And then this is my passenger side. So there's going to be a little garage outlet there that I haven't put in yet. But then there's that outlet up there too. So these will be running through these 20 amp breakers. Uh, I'm at a pretty decent stopping point for the night now. Um, you can see I kind of have them all wired up the way I want to, except for my grounding bar. I'm unsure of how I'm going to do this because you can see grounding bar is supposed to go into that little point right there. So I'm just going to take some time to think about it. But the nice thing is all I have left really is to figure out how to tie this to the box, which I'm unfortunately thinking I have to undo these wires, come back, come undo all three of these actually, get the ground bar in and then install everything. I'll figure that out. Um, but the nice part is all I have to do is wire up these black cables to the bottom screws here on the circuit and then you can see here the way that they work is you just kind of put them in there's this little there's this little blade here you can kind of see it side by side you just kind of dunk that in lock it in and then you uh, put the faceplate on it's good to go and there we go so I wired in my blacks out down here you can see they go in so this is going to be my passenger side this is my driver side actually I think I fight vice versa that I'll have to do give them some tests but you can see that it's all installed now. Pretty happy with how it turned out. You can see behind the inlet cable there is my grounding bar back there. I may run a, a chassis ground to that as well. Uh, might have to, so make sure that I have enough space in one of these little outlets down here. But there she is. Now just to figure out how to put the frickin' faceplate back on. 